Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 15 of The Lockup. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host, Big B. Brian Adams. And we got a hell of a week for you. Um, last week, last two weeks, as you know, we've done the top 10 entrances and top 10 themes, which we've got some pretty positive feedback on. Um, looking back, I, I really wish there was guys that we talked about putting on the list, and I think when it came down to recording, it just slipped, I know it slipped my mind. Like Jericho and Goldberg and some of these other guys. Yeah, there were. It's it's. It was one of those things that looking back on now, you're kind of like, uh, we could have added this guy, we could have added this guy, and and maybe it would have been smart for us to just make that a two parter and then stretch it out and got more. But it is what it is. Right. Um. So that was last week. This week, um, just what three four days ago, we found that uh. Dusty Rhodes has got a tag team partner now in uh, Roddy Roddy Piper, who's passed away Friday uh, due to cardiac arrest, which was really strange because I was on WrestleZone all day Friday because uh, I just discovered uh, their daily podcast, which I've been listening to. And it's actually quite good. Um, so I've been listening to that, and then it was like I got to the house about 6, and about 4 o'clock, I didn't see anything. You know, I was like, whatever. So then Bloomquist texts me. He's like, did you hear Piper died? It's like, what? So I immediately shut off the podcast and went back to their news feed and saw like a ton of fee- a ton of posts that had just been put up, like one right after the other. And it was about Roddy Piper. And I was like, holy smokes. You know, at 61 years old. And I was talking to my girl's dad the other day about this. And I was like, okay, we lost Dusty and we lost Piper. Was there, because we couldn't remember... Was there someone else who passed away this year before Dusty Rhodes? As far as, like, wrestling? Yeah. Uh, not that I remember. Yeah, me neither. I mean, not if that there I was, then sorry. Yeah. But I, I don't remember, because the only one that came to mind was Warrior, but Warrior was last year. Yeah, Warrior was last year. Oh. Uh, but, yeah, um, so we lost Piper. Very, uh very strange how it all happens you know i think it's funny chris bookout told me that he feels like that austin killed piper so he's trying to start this whole convoluted theory that austin caused piper's death because of their feud okay (laughs) no it was it was a goofy thing to say man yeah you know all i have to say is that is and i know this is probably gonna make me sound like a dick but why couldn't hulk hogan wait why couldn't hulk hogan (laughs) die before I thought he was a complete a-hole. Yeah, it's funny you transitioned into that, because uh, that was pretty much going to be the bulk of this uh, of this episode. Hogan and, the well, Hogan stuff. But before we get to the Hogan stuff. Like, I love Piper, and I can't sit here and pretend that, like, see, this is the, I, I'm a bad wrestling fan, because I don't remember anything that happened before, like, great matches. I could talk about something that happened a month ago, two months ago. But going back years and decades, I don't remember. So I can't sit here to claim to remember anything. I didn't. Wasn't it WrestleMania two that it was him and Paul Orndorff versus Hulk Hogan and Mr. T? WrestleMania one. That was WrestleMania one. Yeah. Because I knew it wasn't three because that was Hogan Andre. WrestleMania two was Hogan and um, King Kong Bundy. Okay, right on King Bundy. That guy WrestleMania still... 2, I believe, was Piper versus Mr. T in a boxing match. Yeah. I believe. I'm not 100% on it. But, like, I remember that. I remember the Piper's Pit. I remember the Coconut Incident. Yeah. Uh, I really specifically remember They Live. Do you remember WrestleMania, I believe it was 8, Roddy Piper versus Bad News Brown, where Roddy Piper came out with the Braveheart, and he, he literally did the blackface. He painted half of his body from the top of his forehead to the bottom. All black. Really? Yeah. He no. Did, he did half and half. Bad News Brown? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. You gotta watch that. It's on the network. But anyways, before we get into the Hogan and everything, we just want to say rest in peace to Roddy Piper and our condolences to the Toombs family. Absolutely. He was great, and he will be missed. He was one of those guys that did not need a belt. The inner cut. He, like, he, his name and his character went over the fact, or that's, I'm not even saying it right. It's just one of those things. He just, his character didn't need a belt. He was so over, it's not even like, it's ridiculous. Like a belt would do nothing for him. Yeah. You know, even though he had the IC strap, it just, it was whatever. It was a prop. That was when it was really a prop because like Piper's you, greatest asset was his he mouth. He transcended. 
you know a man has transcended the business when people that aren't even wrestling fans were talking about him when he passed. Yeah, correct. Like, um, he was just definitely a legend, one of the greats. Uh, and the guy, you know, I've heard stories about him from people, and he seemed like just a class act. So not only was he a badass in the ring, but he was a classy guy outside of it, which you can't say that for all of these guys. Nope. Which so, brings us to... No, that does no, not bring us to no? that. No? Okay. saving that for last. Which brings us to the classless Eva Marie, so I'm just going to get this out right now. I hate her. I, I fail. You're going to fail. You're done. What if she goes on to be the greatest Divas heel in the wrestling history? Because of how much heat she has. Okay, she's she, got X Pac heat. If she goes on to be the greatest Divas heel, she will also go, go on to be the worst Divas wrestler ever. As far as skill set, she's horrible. I give it up. Like what? I don't know if you saw her NXT debut match. No, not yet. It was awful, man. I actually didn't even have plans on talking about her. And the the you brought her and up. the horrible thing about it is, is if you watch some of those other girls wrestle. They look like well-oiled machines compared to Eva Marie. That's messed up. And she called out your girl. Which one? Sasha Banks. Oh, yeah. She's like, I'm coming for that Divas title. Sure. It's like, sure. Got a lot of girls in WWE, man. Sasha Banks, my English McMuffin page, JoJo. Anyways, um, what do you think of uh, this new Divas revolution on Raw? I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's... uh. Man, it's it's great when you actually have like multiple Diva, divas matches on a t- on a televised event, mm-hmm. which is something I don't think we've ever really got before. Um, I feel like it's nice to see that. I mean, it sucks for AJ Lee because I feel like she really was pushing for AJ Brooks. You mean whatever? That's her Twitter now. Is it? I feel like she was really pushing for this when she was here and she left, and then it didn't happen, and now it's. Well, I, I feel like they got rid of the divas who really weren't pulling their weight as far as wrestling goes. And now that the divas that they're spotlighting, these nine divas, nine or ten divas, um, like these are the workhorses. Mm-hmm. These are the ones that are going to show, yes, we can go ahead and put on a great performance. If possible, we can main event the way that Trish and Lita did mm-hmm. way back when. You know, um, And hell, I'll even give the Bellas their props because now they're starting to be you know, as you stated earlier, kind of well-oiled machines. You know, they're they're learning. I mean, I would still put Charlotte at the top of that roster, you know. And it was funny because I was reading an article, I believe it was on WrestleZone, where they were thinking, you know, they need a dominant female wrestler in the sense, the way that the males have Brock Lesnar. So why not give it to Charlotte, you know, and you have her hold that belt for about a year. And you give her competition that looked like they came this close to beating her but for some somehow some way Charlotte comes through and you have her be dominant and you don't even have her wrestle on house shows she's got to have a reason to wrestle on the pay-per-view you have these storylines where all these other divas are wrestling to get actual legit title shots to fight the champ the way a la that they did Lesnar why not don't even put her on the show if she's not wrestling yeah that's not gonna happen though oh, I, I know excuse me I know it won't but that, that was something that I had read. No, I, I agree with that. I was like, man, that'd be great. What do you think about uh, uh, was it Layla? Retiring? Yeah. The, to me, it doesn't matter. Um, because she wasn't on TV. Well, she either. hasn't done anything. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like her formally saying, you know, well, I realize I'm not on TV, so I'm just formally leaving now. You know? Um, don't get me wrong, I thought she was gorgeous, specifically around the 2008-2009 era where she was hanging out with William Regal. Mm-hmm. She was a lot thicker, and I love my thick women. But Well, you know, I, I really, this is kind of slightly off subject, but not really. When I was doing the photos for you, moving, we're moving the website, you know, building the website, and I saw the old pictures of the Bella Twins, and I've heard them talk about how, like, Nikki oh, was the interview? stig... Like had the stigma of being called the fat Bella. Yeah, she was really quite bigger. Mm-hmm. Like she's really, yeah. T- I never realized that before. Yeah, but I do. The, the divas division right now, man, that's gold. That's open stage. Like they've way. cut the fat, and Eva Marie. It's, I, I I don't know what the hell they see in her, because uh, first of all, she kind of looks mannish to me. All right, I'm not saying the girl's not pretty. But she has some masculine like features. Okay. 
she has no mic skills. She has no ring skills. What are they trying to do with her? Because she's the step in the wrong direction from the step they're taking right now. Uh, it would be a mistake to push her in. I think she has the look of the Hollywood diva that they wanted. The model diva. Not not the mechanic kind of diva that Charlotte and Sasha Banks and Paige are. And are. But I think she's got like, if you just want to tell. she, I look at Diva Marie. Eva Marie now as the way that we looked at Sunny back in the day. Like, she should be there as, like, a diva's mascot, kind of. You know what I'm saying? Like, how Sunny never really was in a match, but she was the first diva. That's right. how I kind of compare Eva Marie. Yeah, but Sunny was more like a valet and a manager, though. Yeah, but she was there eye candy. She was eye candy. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking Eva Marie should be, you know? Now, that's not to say that she can't grow and learn. But she's already had time. Yeah. And as, as it seems that she hasn't learned much. Maybe she learned how to take a bump. No, I, I'll give her that. Like, that's the only thing I'll accredit her for having is she has acquired the skill to take a bump, but she still looks very rigid and like the just the the fluid of the fluid motion is not there for her. It I looks very that, honestly, stiff. I, I blame that on WWE because. As soon as she was signed, they just thrust her on. Yeah. You know, as opposed to giving her time to develop. So I think that's a pressure that she puts on herself, maybe not even knowing, you know, that, okay, this is something. It's different when it's like, hey, you got to learn this to go to be on TV, as opposed to, I've been on TV, I've been at this level. If I want to stay there, I have to learn. So it's an it's a, it's a added pressure. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And you, we all know with added pressure, sometimes you don't perform as well. So. No, I agree. Like I said, she came out and did that whole little, you know, I'm in NXT, and, and she looked like, just on the fan reaction, dude, she looked like she was having, she was struggling to keep her emotions together. Mm-hmm. I just don't think she's cut out for it, you know. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, man, there's just so much, dude. SummerSlam is a few weeks away. Mm-hmm. Takers returned. Mm-hmm. Do you think? that this was too soon or too late I don't have a, you know what I I really couldn't say cause it's like okay he's finally coming to exact revenge on Brock Lesnar and I liked that the next night on Raw they, he, they had him explain why he was doing it makes total sense uh-huh. you know streaks are made to be broken I get it but you don't shut up about it but here's the thing if you broke the Undertaker streak wouldn't that be something you bragged about? So it's like, eh, it kind of doesn't make sense. But it it does make sense. But I mean, like, the thing is, is the amount of time that it was bragged about. Yeah. Like, you have to admit that night in, after night after night after night, Paul Heyman coming out, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, you know, the one in 21 and one. Right. Like, how... It's, that's how much it's been said. Is that it's ingrained in our brain? The one in twenty one and one. Do you but, think SummerSlam was the proper place for this? I don't know. Now sitting here thinking about it, I didn't know how to answer your question at first. Whether if it was too soon or if it was too late, it's they too late probably in the fact that he comes shouldn't back have waited as long. That's what I mean. Like he comes back a year later for WrestleMania thirty one and fights Bray Wyatt, and it's like Brock Lesnar is an afterthought. You know, but now SummerSlam's coming up, and I don't know. Um, I feel like they needed to do something. They needed to take him out of the title picture, but still keep him around for a while. Yeah. Because obviously they're not yet ready to give him back that belt if he ever gets it again. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much that I've heard about what's going on with Undertaker, you know. I've read that this may be his farewell tour and 32 might be his last match. So he wants to work more dates as opposed to just come back. So they said he might do something at Survivor Series as well. And Survivor This year's Survivor Series marks his 25th year yeah. or something like that. So it's like, do you build him up until Royal Rumble and then have him drop and then come back at WrestleMania? Do you have him go through from now till WrestleMania? You know, like, what do you do with him? And then- well, that's... The weird thing also is that 
Like, Brock has had such destructive matches against people, like, where he has just dominated the hell out of them. Is it really viable to have him do a match against The Undertaker, Here, where Undertaker's not going to be able to take the kind of punishment that a well, John Cena saying, or Roman Reigns They taking? were saying that their match, Taker's probably not going to go to Suplex City, and if he does, it's going to be a variation of it, just because of the brutality of it. Mm-hmm. But here's my thing. Who benefits from this match at the end? Do you break Brock's white-hot streak and have the Taker exact his revenge, especially if Taker's not going to stick around? Or do you drop Taker again? You know, I mean, even if Taker loses, it's not going to hurt his credibility. But here's where I think, and this is, you know, I, I've got to go there. Because he's been rumored, but... Sting. Give us Taker versus Sting, Sting at 32. Perfect way to build it right now. Brock versus Taker at SummerSlam. Which one of those guys is going to win? That's kind of, a, you know, like we just, it's a toss-up. Yeah. They do it kind of the way at Battleground where Lesnar was about to win. And the lights go out or whatever. And the lights come back on. And Sting costs Taker the match. Or they throw it out or something. So it's le- it's a legit loss. It's not like... Or it's a legitimate looking loss, and it it, neither, it makes neither one of them look weak because there's interference. And you don't necessarily have to have Sting come in as a heel and do it. You can just have him come in and be like, you know, hey, this is what I... Or not even have him come in, but have, like, the crows go off or something to distract both fighters. But then Lesnar realizes what's going on, and he takes out Taker. So Taker doesn't look weak because Taker was distracted. Right. And then you go, you build the program from there. So but then would, that exits the Lesnar. Um, what would the reasoning be behind that, though? If they're, they're, if I'm it's, sure they could it's find not something. something they could sell, unless they have a solid reason behind it. Dude, it's Sting versus Undertaker, the match everybody's wanted to see. Well, just give and us from, Sting. We don't even need the build back. You might as well though, because what the build will do is separate Lesnar from Taker, and that can be no, done. No, I, I hear that. You know, because Lesnar can move back on to do other things, where Taker can be like, you know what? Lesnar, I'm, I, I, before I can get back to you, I need to take care of Sting for interrupting this, you know? Why not? And then build it from there. And then give Sting a match at Survivor Series and have Taker interfere or something. Speaking of Survivor Series, this is one thing I meant to, when you brought up the whole Divas Revolution, does that not look Survivor Series-ish? That'd be good. I mean, they only need one more team. And where's Natalia in all this? Hanging out with uh, Tyson, like is she just? But done? there was rumors that they would have had her to Team Bella, which I think would give them a lot of credibility. Yeah, you know because Charlotte is the dominant one in her group. Uh, who who uh, you, know, you have Sasha, Tamina, and Naomi, and the other one. I would have to say that Sasha is the dominant one because she's the title holder. But the, the NXT title holder. But right. then you've got the Bellas, and Alicia Fox, who's out right now. And the Bellas, are, don't get me wrong, they're learning and they're going really, really good with what they're doing, but they're not there yet. So I would say throw Natty with them and let Natty kind of coach them into being the final package that they need to be. You know what I'm saying? Right. I've spoken. Right on. But going back, so that's what I think because Sting has been rumored for SummerSlam. Back no, and yeah, forth, I've, back I've, and forth, I've back heard and the forth. rumors of Sting and, and SummerSlam. There's supposed to be rumors of, well, it was the Wyatt family. It was supposed to be Luke and Bray, and now a third member, versus Roman, Dean, and then they're supposed to be their surprise partner, which was going to be Sting. But why? Sting really does not fit in any of that. Yeah, unless no. you're going to do a Sting versus Bray Wyatt, which Sting has gone on and said he liked to face Bray Wyatt. So I could see something like that building for a Sting Survivor Series match, and then Taker now, interfere. What do you What do you think about the rumors? That the addition to the Wyatt family might be Bo Dallas. Oh, I love it. It makes so much sense. I, I If they don't go that route, I'd be upset. Yeah. Unless they throw out a, a curveball with somebody that would fit just as well, but that neither one, none of us are thinking. But I don't see, I, I think Bo needs it because his gimmick has gone stale. Yeah. You know, it, he's never come out and actually said he was a face or he was a heel. I mean, they don't say it, but... He's right. never been. He's just always done his own thing. Right. In that sense where he's doing it to be positive, but he's coming off like a jerk. Right. So we as fans associate him with being a heel. Right. 
but it's never really been, you know, actually characterized. So why not have something where, you know, he he he's coming out and he's he, they give him this brief run, like maybe tomorrow on or tonight on Raw or on Thursday on SmackDown or something, and he starts to build and he starts to go on his losing streak, a la the way Christian used to do in the early two thousands, where he would kind of throw a tantrum, but obviously without the tantrum. And then Bray tell him, he's like, you know, you need, you're believing, but you're believing in the wrong thing. Come home. And they acknowledge that they are real life brothers. Why not? Yeah, why not? You know, like and, they, and the they don't third. even have to like get into the, who their, their dad doesn't need to be a part of this at all. No, but another thing that uh, I was, I listened to on that Russell's own podcast, one of the guys came up with the idea that why not have Undertaker be Bray Wyatt and Bo Dallas's dad and that was the reasoning for Bray wanting to be the new face of fear fear that you're you're my dad you're put you know you're done you know your 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 time's passed I need to take your place and that would be the reasoning behind the the feud they had that makes sense but I think that's probably never going to happen but the Bo Dallas thing the Bo Dallas thing would be great why not he's got the long hair have him grow out that scraggly Mm -hmm. beard and then just come out with his brother you know why the hell not? Yeah. And then now there's talks that Bo Dallas, that Bo and Bray's sister is training to be in NXT. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So why not have her come around? See, here's 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 perfect thing. You build and build and build because we all know Luke Harper is like the right hand man to Bray Wyatt, where Eric Rowan was just kind of eh. You can have Eric Rowan come back and join him again, make him a four man team, whatever. But near WrestleMania, you have the dissension where Bray's sister starts to come into the picture, and Luke takes a, a a liking to her. Bray doesn't like that, you know. And then she's either with Luke, and she turns on Luke towards WrestleMania, and joins the Wyatt. So now it's Luke versus Bray Wyatt, you know, with the revenge. Because obviously he can't take it out on the female, so he'll right. take it out on Bray for for uh, uh, betraying him. Right. Or you could have it where the sisters there and at Wrestle or towards WrestleMania, they all turn. And ex- exile Luke Harper, so now that makes Luke Harper a face, and it's him and Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Why not? I think Luke Harper's money. That dude is money. Yeah. They just gotta really change him up a little bit. But that guy's got some, for a guy his size. That guy's got some skill. That guy is money. Totally. I enjoyed his solo run somewhat. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the whole, you know, um, weirdo outsider. The way he treated the Intercontinental Title with the free few moments he had it. But I think if they actually gave him focus. That dude could be a beast. Why not? Yeah, no, book absolutely, it. man. Absolutely. Go book it. That sounds good to me, man. You know? Because, I mean, hey, if you're plugging WrestleMania 32 to be the biggest, best of all time because you're trying to break all types of records, you know, they're, they're looking at the past 31 WrestleManias and saying, I can take the magic of those 31 WrestleManias and put it all in one. You need to pull out every big stop. My best advice would be listen to your fans. Yeah, totally. Yeah, because we know The Rock's going to be in attendance. We know Stone Cold's going to be in attendance. We know Shawn Michaels is going to be in attendance. The only one we don't know for sure right now, obviously, is Hogan. But, I mean, every big gun that you can think of is probably going to be there. You know? What if they give us Stone Cold versus Sting? That won't happen. No? I don't think that happened. Sting needs a win at WrestleMania. I'm sorry. I just thought of something I have to, like, uh... Yeah, I saw the look on your face. <laughs> Ultima Lucha started this week. Okay. Uh, I, it wasn't planned. It was supposed to be two hours, which would be Wednesday this week. Okay. Will be the, the season finale of Lucha Underground. Ultima Lucha, two hours. They started this week, the first hour. Uh, oh, man, it really sucks. I can't remember the dude's name. The Mac. The Mac versus... Uh, the man they call Cage. Okay. They had a Falls Count Anywhere match, like street fight. And during the match, the Mac got two Miller Lights, cracked them open, cheers them, pound them, and gave Cage a Stone Cold Stunner. Hmm. It was awesome. Okay. It was awesome. I just I just thought of that. I don't know, it's just a Stone Cold. I thought about the Stunner. I was like, that was awesome. Well, all right. It's, that was it. By the way, that's shaping up to be like look tremendous, dude. From what we saw, the new trios champions, uh, your boy Hernandez and Drago were in a, a strap match. 
they had a bunch of fans outside the ring with belts. Nice. And they had permission to, if one of the contenders falls out of the ring, to beat them with the straps. Wow. And Hernandez said that if any fan touched him, that he was going to get their blood on the cameras. Nice. And dude, like, talk about getting your ass beat, man. Like, he had, like, I'm not even, if if they, they post their matches on Facebook. Right, right. So if you guys, if anyone listening doesn't have El Rey and you can't watch Ducha Underground, if you find their Facebook page and like it, they constantly post full videos of matches. Um, dude, massive belt welt across his head. Was an amazing match, dude. Wow. Just getting the crap kicked out of him. Wow. But yeah, I just thought about the Mac doing the stunner, and I mean, it's just so much. Oh man, we're gonna go over this episode. Um, what do you think GFW with the TNA relationship and people leaving TNA left and right? Bubba Ray left TNA. MVP fired from TNA. You know. Okay, you know what? I over I, Hernandez. I hear really. MVP left, or he was fired over uh, by TNA because of the situation with Hernandez at Ring of Honor. Like, Hernandez went to TNA because I guess it was supposed to be like a per appearance basis. Uh huh. But something happened where he chose something to do with Ring of Honor over TNA. So they let Hernandez go, but it was MVP's idea for them to get Hernandez back in the first place. So they fired MVP. Now, see, a couple weeks ago you said that James Storm was gone. Yeah, he's and gone. that uh, Bobby, no, not Bobby. Reed. What's his face? Uh, Magnus Austin was gone. Yeah, Austin. Those Anderson guys gone. have all had matches. Because remember, these are pre-taped. Well, how pre how pre-recorded are they? Uh, they usually do like a month's worth of tapes. Oh, tapes. really? Yeah. Oh, so if but Magnus so the episode signed, that that Magnus airs on left Wednesday, TNA. Magnus has nothing to do with TNA anymore. He's now signed GFW. Really? Which is part of TNA anyway. They're doing the invasion angle, so it's yeah. like he never left. Well, that's weird. Yeah, I know they just inducted Jeff Jarrett into their Hall of Fame. He's what, the second, third person to the Hall of Fame? Uh, no, there's more than that. Sting's in their Hall of Fame. Is he? Yeah. You know, it's it's sad. So it's because Bubba and Devon. The only, the only quote-unquote big-time money-making star that TNA has, you know, and you, you want to chastise me for saying this, then so be it, is Kurt Angle. Even the TNA homegrowns are leaving. It's just like, what is TNA hanging on to? I think it's going to be one of those things where TNA gets absorbed in the GFW, and it just becomes GFW. No, that's what it looks like happening to me. But, you know, I, again, going back, because, I mean, you listen to this podcast five days a week, uh, a fan wrote in, because with, when they do the podcast, the, the WrestleZone does this, uh, it's called WZ Daily. When they do it, they have it to where, uh, first of all, the episode's usually about an hour. And it's live. And they have a chat room going on. So as fans are listening, they can go ahead and chat. And if it's something worthy, the guy, the host will read it on the show. One of the ideas that he had heard was that there was a lot of producers, a lot of television producers around for uh, the TNA, the GFW tapings lately. Like, but they don't have a TV uh, station. What if... GFW was the first on-demand wrestling. Can you imagine GFW being a Netflix original series? Dude, and you can binge watch an entire thing. How awesome would that be? That would be interesting, man. That would be interesting. That'd definitely be a first. Yeah. I, I'd get behind that. I can binge watch some GFW. If Lucha Underground was on uh, Netflix, dude, I'd be good. Because the way they film it anyway, you know? Yeah, and it's kind of weird because it's, I, I don't know when Lucha Underground will be back for season two, but they're totally doing it like, it's like I've said before, Lucha Underground is set up like a television show. Right. <sighs> Moving on. But I could, dig, I could get behind that. I, there's not enough, this is the, my last thing on this whole GFW TNA. Both of them combined, there's not enough for me to get behind it. Right. I mean, they need to, like, I, something, they need to find something to appeal to me to get me to even want to watch, and Jeff Jarrett doesn't do it. And what TNA has impact, there's not enough for, you know, I've just now gotten into where I stopped DVRing it, but I started DVRing it again because I kind of got interested in some of the storylines, but most of that stuff's all kind of, you know, 
So I don't know what they could do to sell me on that. Maybe some solid matches. I don't know. I'd have to see something. So. A couple more smaller notes before we move on to the two last biggest things. Um, your boy. Not my boy anymore. Your boy. CM Punk. It's not my boy. Did you uh, did you catch his uh, Q&A in Chicago a couple weeks ago with that fan? I did. I saw that, yes. I just You guys can't see me, but I'm just shaking my head. So, from what I understand, the fan has been harassing Punk on Twitter. Uh-huh. Basically saying, you know, hey, if you're a fighter, let's go, let's fight. I'll fight you. Calling him out, calling him out, calling him out. So, Punk was in Chicago doing a Q&A for uh, UFC. And this fan happened to be in attendance. He tells him, hey, I'm the guy. You know, what's up? Let's fight. And Punk's just like, dude, leave me alone. Get off the stage. Kind of, you know, turn off the mic kind of deal. But the guy's like, well, if you say you're a fighter, let's fight. You know, you can't turn down fights. He's like, what, you know. And what really got me was Punk's response to it. And, of course, it's a Punk thing, so all of his fans are going to be in attendance. Right. They're going to get behind him no matter what he says. Yeah, totally. So the guy's like, "What? what's the difference between you and me? And he's like, well, I'm on the stage, He's like, get the fuck out of here, you know? And then they're like, oh, turn off the mic. This is not what we're here for, blah, blah, blah. But he's like, dude, you're not a UFC fighter. You've never had a fight, you know? He's like, you're training just like me. So, like, my, my thing, I just want to know how you felt about it. He, he's just an a-hole, dude. He is. I like that that guy got up there and said that. It it's just sucks that there's so many lips applied to the ass of CM Punk that he's so brazenly cocky and everything. It's I don't. I, Let me ask you something. I don't do like you it, do you differentiate CM Punk CM Punk and Phil Brooks? I should, but I don't. Okay. Um, I think it's because like I think it's because originally I didn't like him. And then because of you, I kind of started looking in a different light. And then because of the way he has, he the, the way he's been seen since he left has just turned me off of him completely. Mm-hmm. Like, so now I, I'm not even a fan of the character anymore. Because the character is too much ingrained in the guy. Right. And I think he's just a humongous a-hole. His missus is now charging 15000 for appearance, plus you have to pay travel fees, first class, and hotel accommodations. Just figure I'd throw that out there. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. We'll see how fast you fade into obscurity. <laughs> um, I, I always butcher this guy's name. Um, Shale Sonnen. You know what I'm talking about? No. The guy from UFC, the commentator. He's okay. With, he's with GFW now. He signed just recently with GFW to be their announcer. He's the UFC fighter, Shale, Shale Shannon, Shannon, something like that. I always butcher the guy's name. But supposedly he's a badass. Like a really big badass, like Brock Lesnar kind of badass. Brock Lesnar can't shamrock in his heyday badass. Right on. Um, so he just did his first set of TV tapings for uh, GFW, which is really weird because, you know, they don't have a station yet. Right. But here's the kicker. During, uh, I think, coming up, this week's SmackDown, I believe. He's got a meeting with uh, Michael Cole. Really? Yeah. This supposedly my, WWE has been wanting to bring him into the company to work in an announcing aspect because they said he's a great talker. Uh-huh. So I just think that's pretty interesting that you know he does the first set of TV tapings and, oh, I'm going to go have a meeting with WWE now. Right. That's hilarious. So I guess there's not a lot of time to spend on that since you don't know who it is. No, I, I don't know um, who it is. Before getting back into the bigger things here, my last smaller thing. If you have not seen it, you need to. Virgil and his traveling merchandise table. Have you heard about this? No. Dude. Okay, you know uh, Jimmy Kimmel does the mean uh, celebrities meet, read the mean tweets and everything yeah. like that? Okay, so Justin Labar from WrestleZone decided to have Virgil. Because, you know, Virgil's recently announced, you know, he's doing the million the GoFundMe yeah, million totally. dollar thing. So Justin Labar paid his travel, his stay, and everything like this. To have him come on a special edition and share shot reality and read mean tweets about himself. You could imagine. Okay. Nice. Um, it didn't, as watching it, it, it didn't go off as well as I wanted it to, only because I don't know if it's Virgil's speech 
or his lack of being able to read the tweets properly, but it just didn't, you know, like he was stuttering a lot over the words and stammering, so it just didn't give it the impact it could have. Uh-huh. But I just thought the, the concept behind it was pretty funny. But no, the Virgil and his traveling merchandise table is a documentary uh, produced by an independent uh, fan, basically, who would kind of see Virgil at these conventions. And I know you know the website, Lonely Virgil. <laughs> um, so it's basically the guy sits down with Virgil and holds no bar, no holds barred facts, questions everything. Like, dude, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Explain this. Um, he was like, true or false? You said that you were involved in 17 WrestleManias. And he's like, no, nah, I never said that. And then they cut to one of the, one of the guys is talking to a fan. He goes, man, this guy, Virgil just told me that he was involved in 17 WrestleManias. And then they cut to a clip with Virgil and a microphone saying, they asked, how many WrestleManias have you been in? I've been in 17 WrestleManias. And then they cut back to Virgil and he's like, what? Like he got caught red handed, you know? Dude, I was like, and then they show a photo because you know Virgil has set up his table in a subway station trying to sell photos in the subway <laughs> he set up at bridal convention bridal shower conventions really he sets up anywhere he can get in he'll set up outside of burger king he set up at flea markets everywhere you could think of. and i'm like you can go to the website and buy and download the documentary wow. or you can just buy it i think i'm gonna buy it you know and then i think this is what virgil needed because Virgil's one of those guys that has become a cult like he's gained a cult like following by being ridiculously uh, unaware of what he's doing. You know? Like, hey, I need money, help me out. And it's just like, dude, I've had my encounters with Virgil at conventions, and it's just like, don't make eye contact with him. Because he'll start talking to you, and once you give him your name, he's already signing your name on an 8x10 talking to you like yeah 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 oh here i signed you know that'd be 20 bucks and you're like what you know um dude it's just it's, it's hilarious and then he got into a uh believe uh, it kind of not hard to believe he got into a twitter uh argument with cm punk uh cm punk tweeted something about he was thinking about hosting a twitter ama you know what that is that no. asked me anything okay right on. and he wanted some ideas so virgil Responds and says, I've done those before. When you let me show you how it's done, punk responds, No thanks, you're a wow. And Virgil's response to that was, 14 inches doesn't mean I'm a, I'm a king of the jungle, baby. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. So, uh, I've been wanting to watch this Virgil thing. I think I'll end up, depending how much that DVD is, I'll pick it up and we'll end up uh, sitting here and just having a good old time about it. Totally. But moving on to our last two tidbits this week, uh, John Cena's broken nose. Holy smokes. Did you yeah, see that seriously, schnoz? Yeah, His nose was under his, uh, his right eye. Like, that was pretty bad, man. That was horrible. But here's my thing now. Going into SummerSlam... Do we need to see Cena versus Rollins? I say no. Because you broke the guy's nose, he still finished the match, and he made you tap out. What left? What, what is left? Oh, I'm going to get revenge on you because you broke my nose? Dude, yeah, you already beat yeah, him. There's... You beat him with a broken nose. Yeah, I thought I thought we were getting more Owens, and they're, they're done with that now? For now, supposedly they're not giving him a push, and he's back down. But see, that, that brings in continues what i was saying the only way i would see a rollins versus cena is if both belts are on the line you know or they tell cena you got to drop the u.s belt in order to get a title shot obviously cena for some reason rollins finds a way to win excuse me but now that that u.s title is vacant fatal four-way owens cesaro throwing sheamus and orton why not or you have a tournament and then you have you know some BS tournament where at the end the last two guys are going to be Cesaro and uh, Owens. Owens. You know. Yeah, because they're they're building a lot of heat. Lately. So that's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, if if it's not belt versus belt, or Cena having to drop the U.S. belt, why have them fight again? Yeah, I it don't... makes no sense. You beat him with a broken nose. What's your revenge? You broke. What's your What's your reasoning? You broke my nose. I'm gonna whoop your ass. You already did. You made him tap. 
you know? Yeah, that's... It, they're nah. pretty horrible at booking. Nah, so that's that's that. And uh, he's had emergency surgery. They showed a photo of him the other day. I was like, holy crap, that nose, dude. That man's got a schnoz. Finally, the main thing from this past week. Hulk Hogan. First of all, by now, if you don't know why what's going on, uh, it was announced early last Friday that uh, WWE terminated their contract and all ties with Hulk Hogan. Uh, uh, licensees and merchandising were told to put all production of Hogan merchandise on hold. They didn't say cancel. They said on hold. So I know on the uh, wrestling figure forums and Facebook pages, everybody was up in arms about the NWO Hogan now possibly not coming out and people, oh, I need a custom, I need a custom, and now supposedly Walmarts and Targets and Toys R Us are supposed to be pulling all Hulk Hogan merchandise from their shelves, which I personally still have not seen I because I just picked up a Hogan figure the other day. So who knows how that's going. But um, so Hogan in a tape that's now like eight years old or however old it is, came out and dropped some uh, language that's not, it's not appropriate, but it's specifically not appropriate for the Caucasians to say. Um, I know like Latinos get away with saying it a little bit more, Um, but when it comes to Caucasians, you know, it's big no-no and it's the N, the N word. In fact, you thought I was going to say it, didn't you? I was Um, waiting for you to say it. (laughs) No, I'm not going to say it. Um, And I, the reason I'm going to say it, it's weird because ever since this came out, I've looked at myself and say, you know, I've realized how much I've actually said that word. But obviously, I don't say it with the ER. I say, I say ninja. I, I started, say that word. I've started I say ninja. saying ninja. I've actually started saying ninja. Um, but it's one of those things where it's just like, and it makes more sense because I work with this book bag here. And people look at me and like, what's up, ninja? And they're like, oh, right. yeah, I get it. And they're like, yeah, sure. But, okay, so... I, you know, it's got a he, turtle book bag, FYI. Well, dude, this keeps my lunch. It's insulated. So it right keeps on. my lunch nice and cold and everything. My question to you, obviously, we know he said the word. Um, he supposedly said on the tape, you know, I am a racist. But we've never heard the tape, so we don't know in what context he said mm-hmm. it in. My, my thing to you is, should the public chastise Hogan for saying something like this which he thought he was saying in private all these years ago, just now coming out to light. Yeah, you know, I... There's a difference. See, this is, like, people are soft. This goes back to what I was saying, uh, or what I will be saying on the spinner rack, when I was saying how they intertwine. Yeah, yeah. How society is soft and everything like that. But uh, go ahead, take it away. You know... There's a lot of instances where people have said something in their private life or have been unknowingly taped saying something. And it's like, when did this, and I, I in no way, shape, or form, am I supporting being racist? I'm saying that right now. But at the same time... I see no time, sheets in your closet. Yeah, there's... <laughs> when, when and where is the line drawn... I'm what people are allowed to think and say in their own private lives. See, but then you get the argument of you're a public figure. Nothing you say in, is private. Everything you do is under a microscope because you're in the public eye. Yeah, that's just, that's bullcrap though. Okay. I think at some point people should be allowed to have some privacy. It goes back to that guy. I don't even remember what sports team he was. He owned a basketball team, that old Jew guy. And he okay. made some racist racist comments. Right. And his girlfriend recorded him and then turned around and like and all he like he's there we're forcing him to sell his team and all this crazy stuff. And it's like okay, well I don't agree with that guy. It's obviously an a hole for saying that stuff. But at what point in time does freedom of speech start to protect people's rights to say and think what they want? Right. I mean, I don't, and, and I've had this conversation with many people. I don't agree with what the Klan stands for, but I will support their right to say what the hell they want to say mm-hmm. because we live in America. And until our government revokes that right, like they're doing with so many, I will stand by that. I mean, now, if you're out, like, in the street preaching, like, hate and go, you know, 
go beat an N word, and did, now you've now you've went too far, right? Because now you've taken it to a public arena. See, but here's my thing: people in the black community are supporting Hulk Hogan. A lot of them are like, no, it's it's. I get it. Hulk's a good guy. Mr. T came out, had his back. Now, see that I don't understand. You know, there's a lot of people in the black community who are like, nah, dude, Hogan's good. He's good. You know, like we have no problem with what he said. Like, should he have said it? Probably not. But we don't have a problem with it. Like, it, they're not letting it eat him up. At the end of the day, like, That's it's a, a very that offensive. That honestly surprises me. It's a very offensive word, yes. But at the end of the day, it's a word. Yeah. Like, I guess I don't understand. Well, I can't say I don't understand it because the the equivalent to, to that, I guess, for me would be being called a spick, you know? But it's like, that doesn't bother me, dude. Like, I don't care. You can call me. Like, there's only a few words, very, very few words. I Probably one word that would set me off. But other than that, you know, it's like, first of all, it, I don't know, man. See, it goes I, back to society being very sensitive nowadays. No, absolutely. But it's okay for and rappers to yes, say it? Yes, see? Now, I have, I have black cousins. Okay. Okay? My cousin is married to a black guy. Honestly, probably... Even though me and him don't talk anymore, he's probably still my favorite cousin. Okay. Maybe maybe not because of our falling out, but me and him had a falling out over Paula Dean. When all that wait wait, Paula Dean the uh, the old lady with the cooking stuff. Yeah. Now all oh, her her God. her career and stuff went because she said uh, she had gotten a gun in her. Waved in her face, and she said something about that damn N-word. Now, I am of the mind of like, okay, was that right thing to do? No. But in a high-stress situation, man, you you say shit. Right. Like, shit gets said. Like, I'm sorry to say, but if some black guy was waving a gun in my face right after the fact, I might accidentally let that slip just out of anger. Do but I, you're not does, condemning an entire. Does race. that mean that I feel the whole? No, and this is how my cousin took it. Oh, you're taking. So you you want to call my kids that? It's like what the fuck, man? Did I say that? You're you're my family. They're my blood. I wouldn't do that. Right. And I told him, I'm like, you know, why is it? Why is it okay for rappers to go around and drop it constantly? People to walk around the community. What up, my, you know? But if I say it. I get condemned. So it's either it's either it's said or it's not said. There ain't no, you know. In between. There's no, there's between. no gray area. That's like gay people not liking to be called fag. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm not going to beep that. But you can't call each other fag and then and then say that I can't call. You know, it's, it's, it's pick or choose, like man. Like an exclusive club yeah. kind of thing. You can't have your cake and eat it too, man. It's one way or the other. Right. Because you know what? And especially when it comes to rap music, in my opinion, man, there's a lot of suburban white that are supporting that industry. Yeah. And Well, here's my question to you. You know I what? Mean, You're going to have in, stupid in, young in kids private, now that have grown up and that's just become a term of endearment. Well, you've said it. it doesn't be- mean what it means anymore. You've said it before in private when we dis- when we have conversations. But yeah. we say it because we're boys, you know. Right. And like I said earlier, certain nationalities, Hispanics, specifically Puerto Ricans, can get away with saying it. You know, I don't ask me why I don't write the rules, but we can get away. Look at Fat Joe and Big Pun. Right. You know, they can get away with it, but it's bec- some people will disagree. Some people, however, how you feel, it's you know said that Puerto Ricans have black in them. Mm-hmm. Um, some Puerto Ricans will argue that fact. You know, whatever. That's a whole other story. Well, that's like saying Sicilians. You know, mm-hmm. you've ever heard that? What? That Sicilians have black blood? Oh, really? Because because Sicily was conquered by the Moors. Right, right, right. Um, but going back, it's just like, well, you listen to rap music, mm-hmm. so if you're singing along with it and you say it, what does that mean? You know, yeah. you're not saying yeah, it absolutely. out of anger or hate. No. You're just reciting it because it's an, it's a lyric in a song. You know what I'm saying? So, what? Like, I don't know, man. It's just so so back and forth. And then now they released more of him saying we're having a conversation with Nick when they were in jail and they were on the phone. You know, and but they were speaking Carney. I don't know if you know what that is. Like like what carnival workers speak? Yeah, like. Uh, 
like where he was just saying like, oh, we got to get it. Something along the lines of uh, like instead of saying black people, they said bl- the blizznacks or something like that. Okay. But they were being racist in that aspect too, but more so jokingly. Right. You know, um, my thing with that situation is, dude, you are standing on the other side of a glass from your son facing manslaughter charges. You know, you're going to talk to your kid as comfortable as your kid wants to be talked to. You know, I don't care what nationality you're in. Right. Whatever makes your kid comfortable behind those walls, that's your kid at the end of the day. No, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And for now, that to come out of leave. But here's the thing. They knew that conversation was being recorded. So, obviously, I wouldn't think they would say anything that would, in their minds, come back and bite them in the ass. Right. You know what I'm saying? But with the first tape that was released with the audio when he was talking to what's her name uh bubba's ex-wife or whatever after they had made the sex tape you know this was on the tape as well but it's just like come on man like i get it you're in the public you're a public figure so you're always in the public eye but yes freedom of speech does count yes i believe you are allowed some privacy to Mm -hmm. say what you want but if you i could get it if the entire black community was you know walking the hogan's house with you know pitchforks and torches and they wanted to hang him or whatever but when you have people who have already forgiven him and are taking his side on it you know what, what yeah it doesn't make sense it's kind of like the black people that support the confederate flag yeah but like, I, I honestly I think it it's like the this. wwe who unintentionally are making it as big as as it is because if i believe if the if wwe would have just stayed quiet and then not acknowledged it at all. Would there have been as big as a backlash of it? But for the fact that WWE cut all their ties, which I is, is it, you know it's a smart thing to do business wise because they're such a public traded company, right? So they have to protect them at all costs, no matter you know because there's not one person bigger than the right. sport itself. Um, but I get them having to cut ties, and I think them cutting the ties is probably what made it as bigger as it is Mm -hmm. you know what do you think no it's absolutely i mean i think i heard like rumblings of it and then i went i remember i think i posted on your facebook page i was like hey did you hear about this and then like i went and looked and if you went to wwe like he was gone from the hall of fame thing his merchandise was gone but they were still videos up at that time yeah because they were still taking them down well here's my they you know they replaced them on tough enough yeah Uh, usa network was told not to show the replays with him in them um He's been excluded from the alumni section of the WWE Hall of Fame, but that they have not gone ahead and said that he is officially out of the Hall of Fame. Right. So I think they're just not acknowledging it and they're taking a wait and see approach to it. Um, the way I look at it, in another week, no one's going to be talking yeah. about it. You know, unless something extremely big comes out of this case. It's like you know, on the racism thing, dude. Racism is perpetuated by racists. If it would just be let go by everyone else, it would go away. And if people would stop saying stupid shit, people wouldn't latch on to it. Like, uh, someone pointed out to me, hey, do you know Lauren Hill was on Jimmy Fallon the other night? And they thought it was funny. Because me and this person have had talks before about Lauren Hill. When Lauren Hill put out her album, I can't remember what the name the it was. The Miseducation of Okay, Lauren Hill. and it was huge. And then she came out and said, well, I didn't, I made this album for black people. Why would you say that? Right. Like, then give back the money to everybody who bought it. Right? It wasn't. It's just an ignorant f-ing thing to say. No, it is. Damn, I just dropped an f bomb. It's all good. <laughs> but it's just I don't. You know, you can't. You can't expect people to stop being racist if you're not going to stop perpetuating the racism. I get it. I agree. And that is definitely one of those words that. They either, like, the black community has so embraced the N-word as a term of endearment, yeah. and I felt like taking so much power away from it, that at this point, like you said, I've said it to you in private, am I saying, let's go, hey, no, I'm, I'm just saying, hey, what, like, I, it's now become a term of endearment. Right. As we're just boys, hey, so what's up, my boy? And you so, can't pick and choose who can and who can't say yeah, it. Yeah, no. You know, it's just like, well, we all said it, and Hulk Hogan said it. But we don't like the fact that Hulk Hogan said it. That, it's not cool. Even though, you know, a lot of people are like, well, he said on the tape as well, I am a racist. Right. We didn't hear the tape. 
we don't know in what context they said it. Because he could have said it jokingly. He was like, yeah, I said it. Yeah, I'm a racist. Whatever. Right. You know, but we don't know that. We're not going to be allowed to hear this tape. I don't know, man. Unless, I'm, we, I'm, unless we go buy that porno, huh? Yeah, right. And even then, it'll probably be edited out. They'll just show us the action and that's it. But I'm, I'm done, man. I, it's just, this week... It's been a learned, frustrating week. <laughs> this week, we've learned society is just very soft. Very soft. Speaking of soft... They worked a dark match, a couple dark matches lately. Now the rumor is that they're gonna get called up to the main roster really, really soon. Possibly, really, possibly before SummerSlam. Wow! Just so they can be in contention with the tag titles. Wow! I don't think they're ready. A lot of people say they are. I don't. Th- I think Enzo is ready. I don't think Big Cass is ready. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see, man. Those guys work really well. I th- I th- they work really well together. My thing is, if you bring up Big Cass, you can't put him on the mic. I think it would be smart to to have given them a tag title run in NXT, in NXT first. first. Right. Which they seem to almost forego. That. They've been making them lose matches lately. Which doesn't seem smart if you're going to put them up on the main roster, you know? Right, right. Speaking of, last thing I want to bring up before, because we're running like almost the hour mark Your here. Your boy is supposed to be coming up to the main roster really soon, too. Who? The Demon. Oh, really? That's rumors. Well, that's fast. I've heard that, too. That is really fast. Um, I don't know how true that is. They say they might have him come up by WrestleMania. What do you think about what Dana White said? Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because he's a moron. He's a moron. I'm sorry. You're a moron. Nine, I'd say 65 to 70% of the people who buy his UFC pay-per-views... Are wrestling fans? Yes, are wrestling fans. <laughs> and they were probably wrestling fans first. Um, so for those that don't know, uh, what was it, last, what are we, Monday? Two nights ago... Uh, the afternoon of UFC 190, where Ronda Rousey fought, um, was her name Cecilia uh, Correa, whatever her name was. That girl she knocked the hell out of. Yeah. Um, so, what was the uh, a fan asked why the the UFC pay per view is so much more at thirty nine ninety nine when the network is only nine ninety nine, and he says, well, you know, the network is fake, so you would you yeah, you get what you pay for, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. So once he said that. Oh, he dug himself his own grave. Um, you had wrestling per- personalities coming out of the woodwork. Best one, in my opinion, was Bubba Ray. Bubba Ray, yeah. Coming out and saying, you owe the entire industry a uh, an apology because, you know, you, you made how much money off of Brock Lesnar who came from a fake sport, you know, and um, just so many people. And then he just kept saying, yeah, because it's fake, because it's fake, you know. Of course, you're paying 10 bucks. I'd pay 10 bucks for fake shit too. And Seth Rollins replies, well, well, it's, it, it's 10 bucks, it's fake. I know, he's like, everybody, let's give Dana White credit, you know, because he's had X amount of matches and this and this and that. Dude, he... I like what Seth Rollins said, that was big good. Big time, stuck his foot in his own mouth. Yeah, no, totally. Big time. Like, I don't know why, like, I feel like Vince has went out of his way to try and create this relationship between the two, you know... Ronda Rousey was at WrestleMania with That's the another Rock. thing. A fan was like, well, we'll see when Ronda Rousey leaves UFC for her for this fake wrestling. He gets paid ten times more. Yeah. Or whatever. And he it's, told the, he told the fan. And they, uh, like, how much stupid. would it do for the UFC to be more, like, you know, social and friendly with WWE, mm-hmm. with the sport of wrestling? Because, I mean, you know... Honestly, dude, I, I say, why how not? many how many of those fights are just set up anyway? How see? Here's my thing with UFC. There's no story to it. That's what bothers me. It's just by ranking. How awesome would it be if you had legit storylines, or not? I wouldn't say legit, but you wrote storylines out for UFC, but the fight was legit, and then the you based your upcoming storyline off the winner of that fight. So that fight is not predetermined. The storylines may be. You set your chess pieces in place. Right. But what happens when the pieces are on the board, that's out of your control. Once that fight is over, you continue your actual script and you go from there. I think then UFC would seriously be a contender to, to WWE. Right now, I don't think it is. Yeah, because who does Dana White have besides Rousey? Nobody. nobody. He has nobody. Nobody. Anderson Silva, right? He still has him. Didn't he fight last night? Did Anderson he? Silva? I, I don't know. It might be the other. It might not be. I, I don't know. stopped following when GSP left. But it's like they have nobody, and like I said, it's going to be a matter of time. Before, how much? How many people are they going to throw in front of uh, Ronda Rousey before she gets tired of it? Because like, dude, what last night or two nights ago? Her longest match, thirty-four seconds. Yeah. Come on. And then that girl talked a lot of smack leading oh, up into that a fight. A lot of smack, ton like personal stuff, and it's just like, well, nah. Eventually. 
Rhonda's gonna have another meeting with Triple H and Stephanie, and they're like, look, you know, we love what you do, blah, blah, blah. This is how much we can pay you to do fake stuff, you know, quote, unquote. And Rousey's gonna be like, as soon as my contract's up, I'm coming over here. You know, if she can get paid X amount of more. Yeah, but is she gonna be willing to take the bumps that they take? See, that's the thing, Mr. Dana White. Your fake sport probably involves more injury than your real sport. I would say yes. Unless you're on the receiving end of the ass. Why wouldn't she want to take a bump as opposed to taking a punch to the face? True that. Or a knee to the ribs or something. No, true that. You know, I would be like, Well, it didn't look like she took too many punches last night to me or the other night. Not really. But... It is what it is, man. I think she'll be a part of WrestleMania 32. They, they're they're going to push for it, especially if they're going to break attendance records. Yeah. Vince is going to have one of those meetings with uh, Dana White and be like, look, I know what you called my, my what how I make my living. Whatever. I make my money more than I care about your opinion. You know? Seriously. And he just goes, man, another rumor was that WrestleMania 32, they said, is Vince's possible last big hurrah, which is why he wants to pull out all the cards and all the stops. But then I hear rumors that uh, he might walk away from it, and then Triple H and Stephanie are setting it up to where they're going to end up selling it. Can you imagine the WWE not, not being owned by a McMahon? Yeah. No. I think the McMahon need that it needs to stay in it. That's what it is. I can't see anybody else coming in because then it just I, I can't see it. I don't know. If it's because if there's somebody was going to make a better, if there, somebody was going to come in and buy WWE and make it better, why don't they do that on their own and make a new company? Yeah. Well, because they don't have the talent. Exactly. But, I mean, there's plenty of indie talent. They can get talent. None of these guys were anybody before they came to WWE. That's true. You know, I mean, well, you had, I mean, you had some guys that were somebody. Yeah. But, you know, they weren't at the level they're at. Like, right, Daniel right. Bryan was a somebody, but right. he was an independent somebody. But right. He Same wasn't thing with Daniel Seth Rollins. Bryan. Seth yeah. Rollins was somebody, but he wasn't Seth right. Rollins. Exactly. Kevin Owens was, you know, and wasn't that's, Kev, you know. that's the machine making yeah. them. No, yeah, totally. So if there was somebody that was going to come in and buy WWE... And turn it into something. Like, dude, I would love to see Dalton Castle in WWE. Just, yeah. I don't know what. That guy is great, dude. I say bring back factions. Absolutely. Why not? Last, 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 last bit of thing. WWE is going ahead with their release of the Owen Hart documentary against Martha Hart's wishes. And it's supposed to be in stores in December. Oh, yeah? Yes. Nice. They even they had a title for it and everything. I forgot what it was. We'll have but, to watch that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll watch that and... No, it's in December, though. It's in our off-season, yeah. so to speak. We'll be watching Virgil and his, his traveling merchandise, too. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, for all things Comics Remix, follow us on Facebook.com slash Comics Remix, Twitter at Comics Remix, Instagram at Shy underscore uh, Town underscore Cylon. Um, catch Alex in his remixed reviews. He hasn't posted any in a few weeks due to buying a home, so congratulations to him. We're still currently working on comicsremix.com itself. Uh, should be up and running in a few weeks. Uh, we're getting close. Um, that's all I have. You have anything? That's it. The show. So until next week, possibly. Peace. Unless we decide to do another bye week. Catch you later.